Hello and welcome everyone. This is how to bootstrap your analytics in one hour or less using Metabase. My name is Tim Abraham and I recently wrote a blog post along the same lines. I'll post a link to that in the description. If you haven't checked it out already, you definitely should. Um, but in that post, I wrote about how I believe most startups neglect building analytics for their product early on because they think it's too expensive and how I think that that is flat out wrong. And it's mainly wrong for two big reasons. The first is that it's widely accepted nowadays that you need to be data driven to best learn about your business. Without data, you're basically flying blind and relying on intuition. And meanwhile, your competitors probably aren't. So they're gonna have a huge advantage over you if you aren't arming yourself with data to learn about your product, and they are. Secondly, it's actually really cheap and very easy to get some relatively advanced analytics software hooked up and disseminated throughout your entire organization. And that's exactly what this video is going to focus on. Um, we're going to take a simple application that we want to have some analytics for to answer some basic business questions. And then we'll deploy Metabase, which is an open source analytics software, into the cloud and start using it. And we're going to do all of that in under one hour with very little technical knowledge and basically no money. It might cost you a buck or two to um, run the application in the cloud, but no big deal. So sounds pretty cool, right? Um, let's jump right in. So we're going to start with a sample app that we have. Um, I figured that widgets are not as tasty as pies. And so I built this fake application that lets us deliver pies to customers who sign up and order them. i am got all of this source code on GitHub. If you want to download it, I've also got instructions on how to deploy it. So you can literally follow along and have your setup look verbatimly uh, the same as mine or identically the same as mine. Um, if you have your own application and you want to install Metabase and have it pointing to that application, even better. Uh, you can totally do that as well. Um, this app does the sort of things that you would expect it to. You can sign up, you can order things. It saves all of that state in a database, which is the most important part for our purposes. And I'm not going to spend too much time uh, talking about it anymore. So you can probably understand how it works. We're just going to jump right into getting Metabase started up so that we can look inside this app and see what our users are doing. So I'm going to go to Metabase, metabase.com. Metabase is the easy open source way for everyone in your company to ask questions and learn from data. And the everyone in your company part is the part that I think is the true selling point because it's easy enough for a data scientist or data analyst to pull some data and put it together in a Google Doc or you know put together a few slides on it and give a short presentation but what companies always want is an ability to have everyone in the company have a portal to interact with the data and play around with it themselves and learn about the product themselves. And that's a really cool and powerful thing. Um, and that's one of the things that Metabase provides. So that's great. I'm sold. Let's click get started. Ready to use Metabase with your team. These are the three options that you can pick if you want to deploy it in the cloud, which is what we'll want to do. Otherwise, you could deploy it locally, but then you won't be able to shoot a link over to your coworkers and host dashboards in your office. Um, it's more of a way to just evaluate the product if you just want to kick the tires around. But um, I actually want to give you a version here in this tutorial that is going to be hardened enough that is going to last in your organization for, you know, at least six months possibly more. That's if you're like a small to, to mid-stage startup. You're going to be able to use this 
exactly how I show you and it should just run perfectly in your organization until you get to be pretty big. So we're going to go with Amazon Web Services. That's probably the most common cloud service nowadays and then there's a good chance that you probably have an account already in your organization. The good news is that if you don't, you can sign up for a account yourself for one year and you don't have to pay for it. So that's very cool. So you get a whole year to, to try it out and um, you don't have to pay. So that's great. So I'm going to click launch MetaBase on AWS and it's going to take me into my AWS account, which I already have um, I already have myself signed in on. Um, so we're going to create an, a web app and you can pick any name here. You can see that I already have Metabase in my Metabase here. Um, I'm going to say Tim Metabase. You can use whatever and this this application name isn't really going to be too important. No one's going to see it so you could put anything there. The tier you're going to leave as web server. The platform you're going to leave as Docker and the application code you're going to have the upload your code radio button clicked and if you click upload you should have a URL in this public S3 URL field and you should have something written here if not you can just write anything you like in here but um, this should populate for you so you're just going to click upload and review and launch that's going to take you to the configuration page and we're just going to do a few configuration options to get it running really nicely the way we want it to. You could probably if you like just cl click create app right here and you'd probably get it deployed just fine but there's a couple of things that we're going to do here. Like I said earlier we're gonna, this is a tutorial with all the bells and whistles so this is how I have it running for some of the startups that I work with and it's not too much more work to get it configured this way so let's just go through each of these one by one. We're gonna start with environment settings and I'm just gonna give this a better name than custom environment I'm just gonna say again Tim Metabase you can say whatever you like uh, for domain, I'm going to say Tim Metabase 2. Um, if I just said Metabase, it probably wouldn't be available. So you have to make it at least a little bit unique. Um, so you could maybe put your company's name in there too. That's a pretty common practice. And I checked availability. That's available. And so that's all I'm going to do there. I'm just going to click Save. Now I'm going to go into the software card and this will give me the option to uh, turn on logs if I want and I definitely want that it's going to dump log files into S3 I guess um, that's a good option for me because I like to look at logs I like to know when things go wrong I make a lot of mistakes and so I like to know what went wrong when something goes wrong you don't have to turn them on though if you don't want them I recommend it though uh, instances. Now we're going to leave this as a T2 instance. There is uh, there is some caveats to that which are a little bit beyond the scope of this tutorial and uh, I'll talk a little about that in one of these other cards but for now let's just leave this at T2. Now the next couple ones I think we're going to all leave default so Capacity, I'm going to leave default. Load balancer, I'll also leave default. Rolling updates and deployments, I will also leave default. Security, well I'm going to leave this one default, but you may not have these roles already populated. If not, you should probably have an option in this dropdown to create a new role. So if you just pick that, uh, that will give you these roles for, for future use. So just go ahead and do that. Uh, and the next one will be monitoring. This is another optional one, but it's nice to be able to see the health status of your app 
And if you want to do that, you'll just add the path slash API slash health. And I'm going to change this to enhanced because I just like having more information about what's going on in the app rather than less. I just find it more helpful. So I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to give them my email address so that they can let me know things that are going on with the app as they need to. So I'll just put that in. And if you want to uh, send any like negative feedback about this video to me, you can just email me at that address. Next is going to be the network part. This is going to be the trickiest part. So up to this point, we've been basically using defaults or putting in uh, you know, custom names that we want to pick ourselves. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more tricky. And um, the reason is, is because this type of application needs, uh, first of all, it needs you to have what's called a virtual private cloud or a VPC. Um, secondly, it needs a specific type of VPC, and that's one with a private and public subnet. So if that sounds really like a scary, overly technical jargon, um, the good news is that you don't need to worry because it's pretty easy to set one of these up and Amazon provides a few tutorials including a wizard um, where you just kind of click 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 and you can get that set up yourself. Uh, I'll post a link on how to do that but there's a good chance that you're already going to have that set up in your AWS account. It could already be configured for some other purposes. Um, I already have it set up and it's this analytics VPC. So once I select that, again, it needs to have the public and private subnet. You can see that these are them. I'm just gonna click, click, click this for public IP address and basically click everything that there is. I missed that one. Uh, click, click, all the way down. And then click save. So that was really the confusing one database is also a little confusing because you may be wondering what this database is for. We already have a database. So for here, we have a database that is logging all of this information. So storing users, it's storing orders, and that's the database that we're going to plug in to Metabase. But we also want a database on the back end of the Metabase application that's going to store our Metabase users, our Metabase queries, and all of the sort of things that we'll do in the Metabase application that we need to save state on. So um, that explanation is kind of all you need to know about this. You're probably never going to you know, dial into this database. Um, you probably will never look inside unless you want to sort of analyze some performance statistics on Metabase but you can just enter in a username and password um, and then click save and chances are you'll, you'll never really need to mess with this. So uh, just go ahead and do that and it looks like we're all done. So you'll cross your fingers and click create app, but hopefully everything is all set up so that we don't get any errors and it looks like it is. So it's gonna go into this uh, terminal and give us all of these update messages. And this can take anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes. Of course, that time is all accounted for in my one hour or less guarantee. Uh, but rather than wait for these things to, uh, rather than wait for this to deploy, I'm gonna take a little break, go get a cup of coffee, go for a walk. Uh, and I'm just gonna end this video and call this part one. And then in part two, we'll actually take a look at the Metabase app and connect it to our Pi app. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, post it in the comments. If you liked it, click thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe for more, hit subscribe. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one.